Coming up on CAPS 13 News, Pittsburgh celebrates Halloween with a safer alternative for trick-or-treating. Plus, a new mini golf course adds to the recreation opportunities in Pittsburgh. And the Crossland School of Technology hosts a power tool pumpkin carving event for students. Caps 13 News, the Halloween special starts right now. Happy Halloween and welcome to Caps 13 News. I'm Dylan Wagner. And I'm Brandon Darbyshire. After closing during the COVID-19 pandemic, Pittsburgh's mini golf course at Four Oaks Golf Course in Lincoln Park has reopened this summer with a new look and upgrades. The 18-hole course, originally closed due to the pandemic restrictions and long-standing drainage issues, has undergone extensive remodeling to improve accessibility and maintainability. New features include a gorilla statue set to receive a fresh coat of paint soon and the return of the course's iconic cannon. Other additions, like benches, shade structures, and a pavilion, are still works in progress. No, Four Oaks okay. employee River Peary says that even though the course isn't fully finished, it's already bringing back visitors. Not a lot of people know it's open, but it is. It's not finished entirely. Like, they're still going to put up more stuff, and, like, there's a gorilla out there, and they'll pick the gorilla. Um, and they're really gazillion, but a lot of people like it. Uh, it's really colorful. And it gives people something to do for a long while, like people come with their families and stuff. The remodeling project was made possible through over $200,000 in donations and grants. The mini golf course is open daily at 10 a.m. weather permitting. The philosophy program here at Pitt State is a relatively unknown learning option for students. It is part of the School of History, Philosophy, and Social Science Department, but it is only one of the three larger areas of study without its own major. Instead, a student can only receive a minor in philosophy. Currently, there are only 11 students enrolled in the minor, with about half graduating this year, and four current students considering further education into the philosophy. Assistant Instructional Professor of Philosophy Scott Squires says that the philosophy is incredibly valuable to all students, regardless of degree. Philosophy is uh, fantastic because it touches every discipline um, here on the campus, so it's going to benefit you no matter what you're in. As my colleague um, Jim used to say, uh, philosophy, you know, we put the P in PhD, right? So everything that is going on here at campus, um, everything that your instructors are instructing you in, on some level they've had to touch on the philosophy of that in order to be qualified to to teach those things. So you're going to have a better overall understanding of what you're being taught. Squires is the only professor working in the philosophy program. Considered full-time temporary and runs a course load each semester meant for multiple professors. He hopes Sunday to see the philosophy program expand both in faculty and degrees offered. Pittsburgh residents had two chances this past weekend to cast their ballots early. It was an option many took advantage of to avoid the crowds on election day.
Up next on CAPS 13, the Crawford County Historical Museum hosts a safe trick or treat. We'll have that story and more coming up. Oh, hey! Did you get drugs off the street again? It's not that I'm upset, just disappointed. But I'm more concerned about your safety. Are you at least gonna get your drugs tested for fentanyl? What? Do you know how dangerous that can be? Here, say this chocolate chip cookie is the drugs that you got. Let's look at all these chocolate chips. See how they're not evenly distributed? That's how fentanyl works. Anytime you get drugs, make sure you test all the areas to see if there's fentanyl. You never know what chips could be hiding. Whoa, let's pause right there. Good job on going out and taking a hike, but do you know if that tree is safe to rest on? The main problem with this image here is this vine. How can you tell if it's poison ivy? Poison ivy is number one on our list of plants to avoid because it contains a resin that can induce an unpleasant skin rash if you touch it. Poison ivy you see here in Kansas will grow on a vine climbing up trees. The best way to tell if a plant is poison ivy is if it has three leaves. Remember the saying, leaves of three, let it be. If you come into contact with poison ivy, the best way to avoid symptoms is to wash with soap and water thoroughly. If you contract a rash, rubbing calamine lotion on the area is effective. This has been Know Your Nature. Welcome back to CAPS 13. The Crawford County Historical Museum hosts its fifth annual Safe Trick or Treat event, kicking off many Halloween events oh, in the community. Hey. Did you get drugs? The event brings in Pittsburgh State student organizations and sports teams to hand out candy and lead children in games. The trick or treat emphasizes its safety for children of all ages. Attendees were encouraged to come in costume with there being different prizes for each age division. This is the fifth the year the museum has hosted the event due to the popular demand in the community. County the advisor Historical for PSU's museum does Council for Exceptional Children says their organization will always come back to participate in the event. Great job of bringing together different organizations and departments um, at Pitt State and gives a fun and safe place for kids of all ages to come together and just have, have a good time and celebrate um, candy and each other. The museum plans to host the event again next year. If you're looking to attend another Halloween event, the City of Pittsburgh's Trunk or Treat will be at the City Hall from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. tonight. Pitt State and its student organizations organize various events this past Wednesday right each year. Had the opportunity to attend a special pumpkin carving event and find out more about it. This past Wednesday, right in front of the concrete lab at the Crossland College of Technology, students gathered to carve pumpkins with power tools. The event was hosted by the National Association of Women in Construction and is the second year it has been held. The president of the Pitt State chapter of the organization, Carly Shuey, said that the event has changed since last year. So we started the pumpkin carving with power tools last year um, and it was a hit. We had a lot of people come. Um, some lessons learned definitely was to wear safety glasses and then bring like trash bags for cleanup. Um, we ended up having to like power wash this concrete out here. Uh, so we brought it back again this year, uh, but this year we opened it up to all of construction and then uh, we just kind of spread the word a little bit more to get a bigger turnout and just um, a lot of people don't know like what all we can do with carving pumpkins, especially in construction. And so this is another way to just show our skills. This event is just one of many that the organization holds throughout the year. Assistant Professor of Construction Aaron Jordan says these events help women in construction know they are not alone. So being able to see the other women in construction and chat a little bit about the struggles and everyone realizes they're all dealing with the same stuff. It might look a little different. Uh, and just kind of have, like, we're just like a bunch of cheerleaders for each other. Like, you can do it. I know that class is really hard, but here's, 
Here are some tips and tricks to make it through. Further events the organization will hold can be found on the Pitt State School of Construction website or Gorilla Engage. For CAPS 13 News, I'm Dylan Wagoner. Downtown Pittsburgh, Kansas revived an old tradition this past week, bringing young artists to local businesses, offering up windows as canvas for young kids. Everywhere from Miners and Monroe to Root Coffee House to the Colonial Theater offered up their windows for school-aged kids to flex their artistic ability for the whole Pittsburgh community to enjoy. This Pittsburgh tradition fell out of practice nearly 10 years ago, but the community came together to bring it back. In a city press released by the City of Pittsburgh, thanks to Ryan Insurance, the Downtown Advisory Board, the Morning Sun, and Artforms Gallery, downtown businesses can again have their windows painted by school-aged children for Halloween. So thank you to our local businesses and all of you young artists out there. Up next on CAPS 13, Weather with Vale Mesmer. We'll have that and more coming up. Choking can happen anywhere, anytime. If someone can't speak, cough, or breathe, you need to act fast. The Heimlich Maneuver could save a life. Stand behind the person, wrap your arms around their waist, and make a fist with one hand. Place it just above their belly button, grasp it with your other hand, and give quick upward thrusts. Continue until the object is expelled or they can breathe again. Remember, every second counts. Learn the Heimlich Maneuver today. You could be a hero. Planet Earth. Vital to us all. And still, sometimes, some of us take it for granted. But how much can we ignore? How much can we overlook before it's too much? or before it's too late. Your choice matters. A lot of little efforts have a big impact. Hey gorillas, flu season is almost here. Let's hear from Taylor at the Student Health Center on the importance of getting vaccinated. We really want to express the importance of getting your flu shot this year. We have seen a number of COVID cases on campus, so we want to make sure that students are staying healthy and safe and being able to participate in all activities. So here's your yearly reminder, make sure you get your flu shot. It is available for all students, faculty and staff starting at the end of the September. You can get your flu shot today at the Bryant Student Health Center. Hi, and welcome back to CAPS 13, and happy Halloween! I'm Bill Messer, and it's weather time. Now, don't let the weather scare you this evening. Right now, it's, 64 deg it's 62 degrees and sunny. Well, the weather's being scary today, apparently, because uh, the sun will be setting at 60, I will be sitting at 6.21 p.m. tonight, setting the mood for the spooks and frights of the evening. Now, if you're going out tonight, make sure you bring a jacket or a layer under your costume and it's going to get a little chilly. Um, at 7 p.m. it will be, we'll see 53 degrees and the temperature will continue to drop to 48 degrees at 11 p.m. A scarily fun evening aside, let's see what from November will bring us. The first of the month is cooler, setting into the cooler weather. Um, 60, 69 degrees at noon being the highest temperature of the day. A predicted low of 50 degrees in the evening with humidity settling in at, ooh, at 56%. Um, winds coming in from the southeast at, temp at 10 miles per hour. And visibility will be a clear 10 miles. And what, brother way, wow, what better way to bring in November than a football game? Let's see what Na Gorilla Nation has in store. Uh, football fans, it's going to be a windy, rainy day. We're looking at 65 degrees at kickoff at 2 p.m. Low temperatures expected in the evening, with lowest being 64. Humidity is going to feel a little sticky with the rain. Um, it's sitting around um, 58%. Winds will be coming in from the southeast at 4 miles per hour, visibly once again at 10, 10 miles. So remember to rain, layer up, 
and bring those ponchos, rain or shine, at Carney Smith Stadium. <sighs> Enough of that. Let's see what the first week of November is going to look like. Next week promises fall weather with our highest weather being at 73 degrees on Monday. And it continues to dip over the week as our Friday, as our Friday hanging around 58 degrees. Evenings are going to be cold, so make sure you bring a jacket with you. And then coming up on Caps 13 News, Zechariah Boswell and myself will give you our thoughts on a few horror films. That and much more after the break. Yes, you have a plan. Yeah, I'm always at. I don't know why you never listen to me. They do this every single time. Whoa. Being buffed up during a crash helps keep you safe inside your vehicle. Severe weather can strike at any time. If you want you and your property to be safe, listen to these steps. Stay away from big metal poles like this one. This is a flagpole. You do not want to become a human lightning rod. Resources like the National Weather Service will sometimes send alerts through your phone letting you know if a severe weather event's happening. If you're on the road during a storm, make sure to drive five to 10 miles below the speed limit. You do not want to go off the road. And it also allows you stopping time in case any debris falls into the road. If you're going to go park your car, if you have a garage, park it in your garage. If you need a carport, park it under a carport. You do not want trees falling on your car. Make sure to stay away from windows. Thunder and lightning can both break windows, and high winds can send debris like tree branches crashing through your window. And you do not want to end up like this fence here. Now whether it's inside or outside, when severe weather strikes, you know how to stay safe, gorillas. Welcome back to CAPS 13. I'm Bill Messer. And I'm Zechariah Boswell. But you might be wondering, what are we doing over here? Welcome to Cap 13's news very own entertainment segment where we discuss various movies and shows worth seeing this week. With the spooky season upon us, you're probably looking for scary movies to see while in the spirit of Halloween. While there are plenty of scary movies in theaters right now, like Smile 2 and Terrifier 3, let's take a look at what you can enjoy from the comfort of your own couch. Having just left the box office, Universal Pictures Speak No Evil brought in 37,000 in the US and Canada. This slow brown thriller had movie girls on the edge of their seat as they watched a family discover stark secrets about people they once thought were their friends. Ratings for this movie sit at 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. Watch as the friendship and cozy British side begin to unravel and this film built tension builds up to reveal leaving the audience speechless. You guys have been... Just a breath of fresh air. <laughs> oh, well, that is very sweet of you to say. A film not yet out, but very much anticipated, is Robert Eggers' Nosferatu. This remake of the 1922 movie of the same name promises to deliver a terrifying experience set in 1838. This gothic film follows the experiences of a young woman and how an obsessed vampire can affect her in the surrounding town. This film will release in theaters on December 25th, and we here at CAPS 13 can't wait to see how it delivers. We are here encountering the vampire. Nosferatu. If you're looking for some more lighthearted family fun this Halloween, 
Venom The Last Dance provides a fun-loving, silly, and action-packed adventure for the whole family. Although parents, you should know that your kid's favorite alien reporter combo has a thing for eating brains. Venom The Last Dance is the final film in the Venom trilogy and has showings all weekend for the holiday. This film combines the spooky nature of an alien invasion, the buddy cop fun that Eddie Brock and his symbiote counterpart, and the superhero action that fans have come to expect from these movies. Eddie, my own, has found us. Jesus Christ! There's an army coming that cannot be beaten. As long as Venom lives, everyone, everything will end. On the streaming side of things, Hysteria has come to Peacock TV. Hysteria is a thriller slasher series following a group of teens that form a metal band for fame and glory, while also leaning into the idea that metal music is satanic. The story unfolds with elements of horror and mystery in a Stranger Things-esque kind of way. There are many things to be afraid of in this town. Who here has heard the rumors about Dylan Campbell? Oh, hell, the Prince of Darkness. As said before, Hysteria is streaming on Peacock TV and rocks an 86% on the tomato meter, according to Rotten Tomatoes. That's pretty good for horror shows these days. Thanks very much for joining us this Halloween to talk things entertainment. I'm Zechariah Boswell. And I'm Vale Messer. Coming up on Caps 13, a Kansas senator secures $5 million for Pittsburgh State STEM programs. We'll be back after the short break. Did you get drugs off the street again? It's not that I'm upset, just disappointed. But I'm more concerned about your safety. Are you at least gonna get your drugs tested for fentanyl? What? Do you know how dangerous that can be? Here, say this chocolate chip cookie is the drugs that you got. Let's look at all these chocolate chips. See how they're not evenly distributed? That's how fentanyl works. Anytime you get drugs, make sure you test all the areas to see if there's fentanyl. You never know what chips could be hiding. Whoa, let's pause right there. Good job on going out and taking a hike, but do you know if that tree is safe to rest on? The main problem with this image here is this vine. How can you tell if it's poison ivy? Poison ivy is number one on our list of plants to avoid because it contains a resin that can induce an unpleasant skin rash if you touch it. Poison ivy you see here in Kansas will grow on a vine climbing up trees. The best way to tell if a plant is poison ivy is if it has three leaves. Remember the saying, leaves of three, let it be. If you come into contact with poison ivy, the best way to avoid symptoms is to wash with soap and water thoroughly. If you contract a rash, rubbing calamine lotion on the area is effective. This has been Know Your Nature. Welcome back to Caps 13. UN Senator Jerry Moran announced on Tuesday that Pittsburgh State University will be receiving $5 million in federal funding for the STEM improvements. Warren expressed that he wanted to create a better workforce in Kansas so things can improve for communities. The funding will be used to update equipment and research labs in Heckert Wells and Yates Hall. Associate Professor Christine Brodsky commented that the funding will take a strong impact on student research at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. Thank you for joining us today for our Halloween special. I'm Dylan Wagner. And I'm Brandon Darbyshire. From all of us at CAPS 13, be safe this Halloween night, and we'll see you next time.